This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today we have a complaint of a kitchen AC that's not working properly. When I first came up, the first thing I do is go ahead and open this up and go into the codes, okay? And look to see what codes we have. Now we have an active code of 27 at the moment. Um, we go over to the circuit board thing and it says low pressure three has opened three times and it's locked itself out. So we're gonna probably have a low pressure issue, but we can't just assume that. We'll have to put our service gauges on there and then also check airflow, make sure we don't have a loose belt, etc. But just doing a walk around, come around to the outside of the unit right here. And we also have an extremely dirty condenser coil. So at this point, before I go any further in troubleshooting, I'm gonna go ahead and get this condenser coil cleaned up. And it just so happens that the rest of their condenser coils are just equally as dirty. Metal mesh filters are plugged. So they've got some problems here. If we come on over to this AC, this one's not as bad, but this one's got quite a bit of lint on it too. So we're gonna get these cleaned up and then we'll finish troubleshooting once we get these things cleaned up. As far as this goes, you gotta get the lint off first. So I'm not washing into it. I'm using my wand and it has a flat function. So I'm actually just washing the lint off of the condenser, not even spraying really into it at the moment. And we're gonna get the lint off and then we'll saturate the entire condenser. And then once it's saturated and we get regular water through, then I'll use chemical and put chemical on it too and get it cleaned out. Like you guys have seen me do many times, I like to take the panels off and clean from the inside out when at all possible. So at this point, I'm just wetting down the condenser, giving it a nice smooth surface for the coil cleaner to flow through. And I'm also gonna get on the inside and pull off the big chunks. You already see I've got some of them off already. We wanna do that before we start hitting it with coil cleaner to try to you know, make the coil cleaner more effective. So it's not trying to push that stuff out and it's actually trying to push out what's inside the condenser. So I, I honestly don't understand why it's so hard for people to realize how easy it is to pull these panels off. And if you see, you can tell that these condensers are internally damaged because people have been using that coil cleaning door and they're not really paying attention and they're just bashing and smashing the condenser. Look at that, look at how bad that is. And that's because people aren't trying. It's not that hard to pull this panel off. Look at these inside panels and how damaged they are, or a condenser coil. It's just beyond, understanding for me. So it's important to understand how to put on coil cleaner. So the first step is clean off big debris. Then wet the coil down from the inside out if possible, okay? Get it nice and wet, have a smooth surface for the coil cleaner to move. If it's not wet, in my opinion, the coil cleaner has a hard time moving across. It, it, the water kind of lubricates the coil. Next thing is apply on the lowest setting on your coil gun. Uh, I'm using that coil gun right there. So I start with the E setting, the lowest setting, and I apply a coil cleaner from the inside out and let it sit and let it penetrate, okay? Then, after I've let it sit for a little while, I'm gonna go on a more concentrated setting and I'm gonna apply it again from the inside out and then when I'm done with that, I'm gonna apply it from the opposite side also. And I'm gonna let it sit and do its magic, but you don't wanna leave it on too much, depending on the cleaners that you're using. So right now, I'm using new Calgon, new Bright, very corrosive, very fast acting, and very dangerous coil cleaner because you have to get it off fast. So right now, it's time for me to go ahead and rinse this coil cleaner off before it does any more damage to this coil. So I've already rinsed off all my cleaner and uh, adjust my nozzle here. So I've rinsed off my cleaner from the inside out. After I've done that, and as I'm rinsing it, I'm making sure it's coming through. It's barely coming through, but that's because we're running two hoses right now, but it, it's clean. I've got a second person washing the other condensers at this moment. We just have a splitter. So then I'm gonna go ahead and rinse it from the other side. And what I wanna point out is, is that we don't need the coil to be shiny like brand new aluminum because in all actuality, when you get it shiny like it's brand new aluminum, you're, you're etching the coil. You're eating the top layer of the coil off. Okay, that's because that coil cleaner is very corrosive. So we just want the foaming action of that coil cleaner to push the stuff out. In all honesty, I really prefer to use the Refrigeration Technologies uh, heavy duty condenser coil cleaner because it's less corrosive. It's just, for me, it's hard to find. I, I order it, but then I run out really quick because a lot of supply houses don't stock it in my area. So unfortunately, the new Calgon is the, the one, so we just gotta learn how to use it properly. And I try to use the Refrigeration technology stuff as much as possible, but I, just, I have to order it typically is what I have to do, and then I never know how much I'm gonna need. So 
But anyways, I digress. So yeah, we're just rinsing it off. So this is a nice clean coil. The water's coming out and we're gonna go ahead and attack the other side. I do them one side at a time so that way I can properly clean them and don't leave the cleaners on too much because that stuff really will eat up a condenser. If you left it on, it would destroy it, so. So, I've already wet down this condenser front and back and then now I'm gonna apply the cleaner. I'm starting on the, the E function, which is the lowest concentration and we're just gonna go ahead and apply it. We're gonna start from the bottom, work our way up. I've heard both methods about starting from the bottom or the top, which one's better. You know, they both work fine for me. So I really don't notice a huge difference by starting from the bottom or the top. But we're just gonna wet it down on the lowest function. We're just applying the cleaner. We're gonna let it sit for a minute. Then we're gonna apply the cleaner to the other slab condenser on the right. And then we're gonna come back at the higher concentration and apply it too. So I'm gonna leave it like that, move on to the next one. See, I really don't know as much of a difference. I'll start from the top on this one, so. Apply it. I've heard both methods, like I said, of people saying to do it from the top and the bottom. The top kind of makes more sense to me because gravity flows that way. But, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. We don't gotta spend a bunch of time on it. We're just letting the coil cleaner sit there. Now I'm gonna switch to the higher concentration. And this is where we're gonna see the foaming action happen. And we're just gonna go ahead and apply it. And by the time I'm done applying the other slab condenser, it's time to rinse this condenser. We should already see some foaming action going on. We're just gonna go ahead and keep going here. You don't gotta get crazy, it's doing its work. This side of the condenser, in all honesty, is not as dirty as the other side, because this is not the primary side. So, start. And again, remember, we're not looking for that shiny condenser coil, we're just looking for this stuff to penetrate and push the dirt and grease out of the condenser. I got a little bit of cleaner left. I'm gonna go ahead and apply it from this side just for giggles. Don't really gotta do too much. And same thing over here. As you can see, I've already got condenser coil cleaner coming through. All right, and I just ran out of cleaner. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and switch over and use the spray wand and rinse all that stuff off now. You can see we're coming through nice and clean now. So we're just gonna continue to do that. We're gonna go row by row to make sure that we get all the coil cleaner and all the muck out of the unit. Let's not forget to rinse off the metal mesh filters. You typically don't wanna use coil cleaner on the metal mesh filters because the aluminum is so thin that it'll eat them away. Sometimes you have to very, use a very diluted ratio of coil cleaner on them. And don't leave it on for long at all if you have to, but try to just use water. And that's what I'm doing. So these ones are dirty on the other side, so I'm washing them from the opposite direction. And you'll see that even though I'm washing them from the opposite direction, they'll still be dirty and we'll have to rinse them from the other way too, but at least we can get some of the stuff. You can kind of see down at the bottom right now some of the goo that's coming out of this thing. So I'll flip them around right now. In the meantime, I'm letting the condenser on the unit drip dry, and then I'll start assembling it and uh, we'll go from there. I'm actually not gonna assemble it uh, because I'm gonna go ahead and, since I have the condenser taken apart, I'm gonna do a leak check. You can see some of the stuff came out, but there's a bunch behind it still. So we'll go ahead and rinse a little bit more. You can see, yeah, that thing's still pretty dirty. But yeah, I'll go ahead and do a leak check on this guy right here uh, since I have the covers off too, because I'm assuming that we have a refrigerant leak because it was low pressure lockout. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time, but because I have the cover off, I'm going to just quickly run a leak trek across the third stage condenser. Then I'll put it together, do the evaporator, and then test run the unit. It could even be a bad TXV causing a low pressure issue, so you don't want to waste too much time. So, just going to test it. I'm just quickly going through here, and I'm going past the condenser now, so go back to the bottom over here. Oftentimes you get leaks right on the bottom of these condenser return vents is usually where they're at. It's pretty common. Um, I'm using the DTEC Select leak detector. This is the leak detector I've used forever. I really have no other opinions about other leak detectors because I've used this one for so long. 
I know a lot of people like using other different ones. This one's just been my go-to for years. All my guys have them. They seem to work well for us. So, All right, I'm not seeing anything. So we're going to do the other side real quick, which rarely is there ever a leak over here. We'll just check real quick. You don't need to spend a bunch of time. You just give it a good pass. This thing will usually pick them up if there is one. So again, you don't need to make your job any more difficult than it needs to be. That center post right there comes right off. A couple screws, pops right off, gives you access to the evaporator. And I decided to go ahead and leak check this evaporator before I went any further. I opened this up and I did see oil residue on the third stage. So what I'm gonna do, is, or what I did was I rinsed all the stuff off with water, rinsed everything down, and we're gonna hit it with the electronic leak detector. And we'll just hit all the stages real quick and uh, see what we can find. Third stage is on the top. You can follow the liquid lines, but you know, you'll, you'll tend to learn the first stage is usually on the bottom and it usually works its way up most of the time with the evaporators. So just kind of go back and forth, running in here, seeing what we're seeing. Something going on in there. Yeah, right in that area. So we'll just hit it all with soap bubbles. Yeah, we're definitely picking up leaks in here. Yeah, there's, there's leaks in here for sure. I'm getting them. Okay, so I'm gonna apply soap bubbles at this point. Oh, well, actually, I'll, I'll do these other ones real quick. But it might be hard to do the other ones because that refrigerant's falling, so we might be getting a false reading. Let's do it real quick. Yeah, nothing else is jumping out at me, so. We've got some, uh, Big blue soap bubbles, love this stuff. Put it on the uh, spray feature and uh, usually just make sure you get a fine stream coming out. And uh, we'll just work our way starting at the top, work our way down. So we've got a micro leak right there and you can tell by the just the micro cluster of bubbles. That's one of the cool things about big blue is it'll sometimes pick up leaks that the leak detector won't. Um, but obviously it was picking that one up, but let's keep looking. I'll keep looking and see if I can find any other ones. There's another one right there. You can see that one bubbling out. That's another small one. And I think I saw another one up in the top right now too. So it looks like we have multiple micro leaks. And there's another one right there. So I found three leaks so far. Just look for those micro clusters of bubbles. Big blue is good for that. So what I'm going to do... Oh, I got another one right there. No, I don't think so. I think that's just the copper. What we're going to do, we just kind of evaluate the situation and see how many leaks we have and that determines how we're going to repair this. Or quote to repair. So I found a few more leaks, so... Right on this one, there's a micro cluster right there. Okay, and I marked it with a yellow marker. Then if we drop down to this one, there's another micro cluster of bubbles right there. Then we have the big one, which is below that, right? And we can see that from in here that one and that one's popping bubbles pretty big so I found three leaks on this they're all repairable but I just got to kind of evaluate everything and decide what's the best route to go so I'm gonna go ahead and put the unit into test mode so what I did was I flipped the shift and then the unit test over and we're gonna go to C11 that's gonna be all stages of cooling hold it down until the decimal appears and then we'll start up in third stage or all stages and I've got my probes hooked up. I'm going to put my air probes in the unit and then we'll charge accordingly. So you can see that we're definitely low on charge. We're running really low. We've also got a wet condenser, but I'm going to go ahead and get some gas in here so we don't go off on low pressure. I'm using a single hose like I usually use going down. I already weighed my tank so I know how much it weighed before I came up here. I'm going to go ahead and I already purged my hoses too. So go ahead and add charge get the suction pressure up so we don't go off on low suction pressure and then we'll go from there all 
Oh, damn it, we just shut off on low pressure. So I'll have to reset it right now. Actually, it'll reset. I get three strikes until I'm out and it'll lock it out. So it'll start back up and then we'll be able to add some more gas in a minute. It had like a delay, so I went ahead and turned off test mode and turned it back on, and I'm just putting some gas in there, getting my suction pressure up, slowly metering it, just basically via my ball valve. We're still low. You want to watch out too, because you can very easily be charging this unit up and find out that you have a bad TXV too. So you want to be cautious about that. You guys notice I got a smaller tablet. I got it from Costco little guy works really nice it's a little bit smaller I was able to get an otter case I'll put a link in the show notes for the video paying attention to our sub cooling as we're adding refrigerant and making sure that we're not stacking it in the condenser also as you're charging you're paying attention to the sound that the compressor is making you're listening to see if it's starting to get overloaded with liquid refrigerant this one's doing okay. This guy's thirsty. It's going to take a lot right now. It's probably pretty low. And the way the customer here works is, is we've got to get approval to do the repair, but plus I can't do the repair today. So we're going to add gas, get them running. It's not going to leak out by tomorrow. And uh, we'll submit a quote. And when they approve it, we'll, uh, we'll come back out, recover the refrigerant. We'll reuse the refrigerant that we already put into it. Looks like it shut off again. So I'll go ahead and reset it. So the third time's a charm. Uh, we're doing better now. We're running a much higher suction pressure off the get-go. So we're getting closer to being charged. Obviously paying attention to our sub cooling. The best way to do is to weigh it in, but we're in a situation where we're just going to add refrigerant and get them operational. So we'll just pay attention. We're going to aim for, you know, about 10 degrees sub cooling. And we need to let the, before we assume that everything's good, because I, again, you want to weigh it in is the best way. But because I'm field charging it, I'm just gonna aim for about 10 degrees sub cooling. And I also gotta pay attention because I might still have a little bit of a wet condenser. So we wanna let that kind of dry out too before we get too close to our final charge. So where I'm at right now, I'm probably gonna let it kind of stabilize out and leave it alone for a little bit, let it dry out that condenser. And then uh, before I add any more refrigerant. So I've let the system stabilize for about 10 minutes. I haven't adjusted anything and I'm not gonna add any more gas to this system right now. We're gonna leave it here. Again, this is just a temporary situation until we can come back and fix the leaks. Um, while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and test all the condenser fan motors, or I actually already did. I jumped out the relays up top, got them all running because some of them were still off via the uh, outdoor low ambient controls. And I'm gonna go ahead and check the refrigerant charge on the other two compressors also and make sure those are up to par and working properly like they should be. So we're looking pretty good so far. So my second stage is uh, running a little high on the sub cooling, but I'm not really gonna adjust anything on that one. Remember, that's the one, the second stage, the condenser is really milked. It's just smashed up really bad, so. But everything else is looking fairly decent. You also gotta remember that Linux technically doesn't use sub cooling to charge their units. They want you to use the approach method. Um, on this one, I'm just uh, getting them operating, basically. So the best way is always to weigh in the charge. our first stage is looking fairly decent too so we're going to pretty much call it a quits on this one and we'll submit a quote to repair the leak on the evaporator coil and see what they want to say i wouldn't be the least bit surprised if they decided to change the unit out they've been kind of on that train lately but we'll see what they have to say one of the last things when you're all done you want to wash away the the chunks of stuff from the condenser because when all this that's just dried up right there, it'll dry up and uh, get sucked right back up onto it. And it's inevitable with all the trees and stuff that we have that they're going to get that, that, it's not cottonwood, but it's easy just to call it cottonwood back on there. But um, yeah, so just rinse it all the way as best as you can. All right, so to recap, we had a service call on a kitchen AC that was not working properly. And when I arrived, we had an active low pressure uh, compressor number three uh, lockout code. 
But I didn't just stop there. It was pretty obvious when I walked up on the roof, I could see that all the condensers were dirty. So we went ahead before we even went any further with the low pressure code, we cleaned the condenser because we needed that to be able to further troubleshoot the unit. So cleaned the condenser, uh, made sure everything was good, cleaned the metal mesh outdoor air filters. Then I started the unit back up, found that obviously we had a low pressure issue. It wasn't a loose belt. It ended up being a refrigerant leak on the third stage. I believe there was three leaks on the condenser. Uh, we have since submitted a quote to the customer. I have not heard back yet, but we'll see soon. But anyways, we found the leaks uh, and then went ahead and we didn't just stop there though, okay? Big picture diagnosis, right? We're gonna go through the other compressors too because we're gonna look at everything. We're not just gonna stop at the first problem. Just like when I was uh, locating the leaks, I didn't stop at the first leak. You continue on and you leak check the rest of the system. We're being thorough. We're making sure that we take care of the customer and give them the best bang for their buck, right? Because we are going to give them a big picture diagnosis so that way they can properly analyze the situation and say, we want to spend this much money. We don't want to spend this much money. There's nothing worse than going in there and saying, oh yeah, I fixed a leak. But when I fixed that one, I found three more. Now, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you can't avoid that, but let's do everything in our power to make sure we don't have that situation. Okay. Try to be thorough, big picture diagnosis, you know, take care of the customer because that's the stuff that keeps them calling you back because they know, Hey, when I have this guy out here, yeah, it costs them a couple extra hundred bucks than the next guy, but they're thorough. They give me the actual diagnosis. I know that when they tell me this is what's wrong, that's what's going to be wrong. And we're typically not going to run into other problems too. Okay. So I try to give my customers the best, you know, service that I can possibly give them. So went ahead, leak checked. Um, I went ahead and leak checked all the stages and then went ahead and put my, uh, uh, smart probes on all three stages, checked the refrigerant charges, everything else looked to be okay. They were happy. Okay. Because I got them up and running. Now I did give the customer the option, but I, this customer and I were very close. So we know, I know how they operate. And so basically I have to ask their facilities department for approval to fix it, but I do have approval to get them up and operational because, uh, guest satisfaction is very important to them. So we got to keep the guests cool. We got to keep the guests in the door, you know, what their logic is they need something running. Okay. Then we can quote to repair because they may want to decide to change the unit or something. So, but we got to get them up and running because if those guests are walking out the door, that's not good for them. We need to keep the guests in the building. So everything in our power to keep the building cool, keep the exhaust fans operating, keep the walk-ins running and so forth. You understand where I'm going with that. Okay. So, um, you know, that's the protocol with them. So I got the unit up and running and, uh, you know, basically just submitted a quote. All right. Um, I also mentioned a few things, the job link probes, the new Samsung tablet, the coil gun, all that different stuff. I've got sh uh, links in the show notes of the video for all that equipment. If you guys are interested in it, other than that, guys, we will catch you on the next one. Okay.